Welcome back everyone. Today I'll be doing CSEC Mathematics, July 2021, question 3 and 6. It includes trigonometry, surface area, finding the volume, along with transformation. Let's get started. Here the diagram below shows the triangle PQR in which angle QPR is 62 degrees. This is QPR and that's 62 degrees. Angle PQR is 90 degrees, which is a right angle triangle showing us. And PR is equal to 11 centimeters. Calculate the size of angle PRQ. P R Q. Now, angle in a triangle, it adds up to give us 180 degrees. So that means I'll add the 62 plus 90 and subtract it from 180, and that will give me the missing angle. Now, 62 plus 90, that's 152 degrees. And then we subtract it from 180 because angles in a triangle adds up to give us 180. So that will give me 28 degrees, and that is the missing angle that is needed. So here I'm going to write 28 degrees. Now the next question is asking us to calculate the length of the side RQ. Now to find RQ, we are going to identify the hypotenuse, and this is the adjacent side. Adjacent is due to it beside the 28 degrees that I'm focusing on. Now, because it's right angle triangle, don't forget Sokatoa, that's what we use. So we have sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, and the cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And the last one is tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Now we can use cos or sine depending on the angle. I'm using the angle 28 degrees. So therefore, I am going to have my hypotenuse and I'm finding my adjacent. So I'll be using cos. Now to use sine, you would have to use 62 degrees and then the side that I want would be the opposite side. Now the length of the side RQ is equal to cos 28 degrees equal the adjacent is the unknown and the hypotenuse is 11. Now cross multiply 11 times cos 28 will give us a value of x and this is where you enter into your calculator 11 times cos 28 and that will give us x is equal to 9.71. And don't forget your unit centimeters. And that is the length of side arc. The next question states, the diagram below shows three triangles, X, Y, and Z on the square grid. This is X, Y, and Z. The triangle X is mapped onto Y by a reflection. State the equation of the mirror line. So it states that the triangle X is mapped onto triangle Y by a reflection. So this is a mirror of X. This is a mirror image. This is the image of X. So it means that this is a mirror line. And the mirror line is y equals zero. So that means this is y equal zero. Now the next is describe fully the transformation which maps triangle x on to z. Now for some persons, they will say that it's a transformation of 90 degrees anti-clockwise at origin zero, zero. Because here I can get the 90 degrees. 
So this is 90 degrees, but we're moving anti-clockwise. However, for others, we'll say it's a transformation and uh, it is rotating around the origin zero, zero, but in this case, clockwise at 270 degrees. So this would be 270. Because remember, from here to here is 90, then this is another 90, so that's 180, plus another 90, so that's 270 degrees. So that is the answer, part two. Now, for the next part, it says on the diagram on the page that I am looking at with the previous slide, translate triangle Y using the vector negative seven one and label the image V. So going back to the diagram, remember it's negative seven one. Let me remove this. So remember, I am transforming Y, this is Y, using negative seven one. This is minus two and zero. So let me, so X is zero and Y is minus two. The next point, this is negative four and positive four. So this is X is four and Y is minus four. And the last one, this is minus two. So X is six and Y is minus two. So these are the points that we're going to translate. So the translation is minus seven and one. So that means I'm going to have minus seven, one, I'm going to add them. So zero plus minus seven, that's negative seven, minus two plus one, that's negative one. So my new coordinate, x is minus seven and y is negative one. The next one, I'm going to add minus seven, one to this. So four plus minus seven, that's negative three. And minus four plus one, that's negative three. So therefore, I'm going to have X is minus three and Y is also minus three. So this is my next point. And finally, I'm going to add minus seven and one to this. So adding six plus minus seven, that's negative one, minus two plus one, that's minus one. So that means I'll have negative one and minus one. So now to draw my lines and that will complete what I'm doing here. And then you will be labeling this as V. Now, the final part is seen on the diagram on the same slide that I was working on, enlarge triangle X about the center zero, zero by the scale X factor half, label this image W. So the scale factor is a half. So given that the center is zero, zero, so we have the points, it is X is zero and Y is two. This is X is four, Y is four. So this is four, four. And the final point, we have X is six and Y is two. So since we say it has a scale factor of a half, this is going to be X is zero and Y is a one. So zero one will be here. The next is X is two and Y is two because we have shrinked it, multiply this by a half. 
So I'll have x is 2 and this is x is 2 and y is 2. The next is multiplied by a half. So this would be 3, 1. x is 3 and y is 1. And this, let me use my straight line. This represents W. And that's it. Question six states, Farmer Brown makes troughs to feed his farm animals using wood that is five centimeter thick. As shown in the diagram below, the trough or rectangular base open at the top and the external dimensions of 300 centimeter, this is 300 centimeter by 190 centimeter by 160 centimeter. Show by calculation that the internal capacity, which is the volume of the trough is 8,091,000 centimeters cubed. Now let me explain further with regards to the internal capacity. The 5 cm thickness of the wood will affect the length, the width and the height. So let me just draw just a small sketch to show that the thickness, which is 5 cm, will affect the dimensions. Now this is 5 cm of thickness, this is another 5 cm and even though this is not straight, this represents the 5 cm thickness below. So the height is affected by the thickness of the wood. So it will not be 160 because if the thickness is 5 cm below, then the additional portion that is left is 155 cm, which I'm going to show you, you know, below in A. I'm just giving you a, a picture of what is happening. So this would be 155 centimeter in height due to the thickness being 5 centimeters below. So it takes up 5 centimeters out of the 160. So it's the same scenario if I talk about the, the 190 centimeter or even the 300 centimeter. The thickness of it, so you have 5 centimeters on the left and another 5 centimeter thickness on the right. So therefore, you'd have... 5 plus 5 is 10 minus a 300 centimeter and that will give me 290 centimeters. It's the same thing where I have 190 centimeters. The thickness will affect it on the left and the right. So the internal measurement, I will have to subtract it from 190 minus 10 because you have 5 centimeters on the left and another 5 centimeters on the right. That's the thickness of the wood. And the internal part is a, the measurement for the internal dimension. So don't forget about these parts with regards to the dimension. So after this explanation, now we can go and deduce what is the internal capacity. Now the internal height, the internal width, the internal length needs to be found since we have 5 meters thickness. So the internal height, given that I've explained that 5 meters will be, you know, due to the thickness, 5 meters needs to be removed. 5 centimeters, I should say, needs to be removed. Because internally, the thickness of the wood affects the height. So that means... The internal height is not 160, but I need to have 160 minus 5 centimeters. So that means my internal height is 155 centimeters. It's the same scenario for the internal length and the internal width. For the internal width, 
what's going to happen is that both sides will be affected because the thickness of the wood so each side five centimeters will be removed so a total of 10 centimeters is removed from the weight just due to the fact that we have the width the thickness of the wood being five centimeters and both sides will have to be removed take into consideration the thickness remember i've explained before what's going to happen so it means the 190 i would subtract 10 from this because both ends we will have it being affected so that means I will have 190 minus 10 to give me 180 centimeters for the internal width. For the internal length, it's the same scenario where the thickness of the wood affects it. So 5 centimeters on each side will be removed. So that's a total of 10 centimeters being removed. So that means I will have 290 centimeters. So the volume, we have to multiply all of this, 155 times 180 times 290, and that will give us 8,091,000 centimeters cubed. Here we need to calculate the volume of the wood needed to make the trough. So I will have the full volume which is the original dimensions that I have. That's what will be used to find a full volume minus the internal capacity. Once I subtract the internal capacity from this, then I'll get my answer. So to get the full volume, I will look at the dimensions that was given in the questions. That's what will be used. So it's 160 times 190 times 300. That will give me the full volume minus the internal capacity was already given. So there's no need to redo this. We'll just rewrite part A answer. Then multiply 160 times 190 times 300. That will give us 9,120,000 and then subtract the internal capacity to get the following 1,029,000 centimeters. Farmer Brown must paint the internal surface of the trough given that one gallon of paint covers approximately 280,000 centimeters square of surface. Determine the total amount of paint in liters that is needed to paint the internal surface of the trough. Given that one gallon is equivalent to 3.79 liters. Now for the surface area, we have to remember that the dimension change due to the thickness. So the height is 155 centimeters, just a reminder. And we have the width to be 180 centimeters. And then we have the length to be 290. So having this manipulation, we can continue by finding the surface area. Just remember the opening we will not double and I'll explain further. So for this, I'll have 180 times 155, but I'll times it by two because we have two of this side. So the next, so remember 180 times 155, we have two of this side. We also have one 290 times 155. That's this length times the width. We have two of each side, so therefore I'm going to double this also. Surface zero. I have two of each sides. Because one side is open, which is the top, I'm just gonna have just the, the surface, which is the bottom, not the top. So it'd be 290 times 180, and we don't need to double it because it says it's open. So that's why it's just 290 times 180. 
So just doing our calculation, and remember, these are the, the values I used. So doing my calculation, I have 180 times 155, and then I times it by 2. So that will give me 55,800. The next part, 155 times 290, then times it by 2. So that will give me 89,900. 89, Plus, this I will not times it by 2. So it's just 290 times 180. Remember, the top part is open. So that's why I didn't times it by 2. So 290 times 180 will give me 52,200. So adding this to get 197,900 centimeters square. And this represents our surface area. Now remember, it wants a total amount of paint in liters. That is needed to paint the surface area. This is in centimeter square. So I can convert using 280,000 centimeter square is equal to one gallon. So it means I can convert 197,900 centimeter square to gallon. So I'll say it's equal to X amount of gallons. Now cross multiply. So cross multiplying, we have 197,900 times 1, if we see back what I have here, is equal to x times 280,000, so that's 280,000x. To make x a subject, we divide both sides by 280,000. And uh, that will make x stand alone, where x represents the gallons. How many gallons do we have? So canceling out all the zeros and the 280,000, x is equal to, now I'm going to convert this to decimal. So I will get 0 0.07 gallons. And having this, uh, my final step is just to convert the gallon to liter. And it was given that one gallon is 3.79 liters. So that means to convert it, I will have to multiply 0 0.707 gallons times 3.79 and that will give me the liters. So just this information I'm using, it was given. So I'm multiplying the 0 0.707 times 3.79 and to three significant figures my answer is 2.68 liters thanks for watching guys don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and if you have more questions leave a comment below have a great day